All right, hello everybody. Um, thank you for coming to my panel um, for Can You Take the Heat? Um, which fursuit head is right for you? My name is Bayou. I've been in the fandom since about 2016, just as some background, and I um, have been making fursuits since then and officially you know, became the Pirate Cove back in 2020. So just as some background. Um, and, well, 2019, technically. Um, so I, I will just be going over, you know, general information about heat regulation in this panel. While um, it does say, you know, which first suit head is right for you, this is just a comprehensive informational panel that kind of will help you, um, you know, come to the conclusion of wh um, when it comes to temperature regulation, which, pan which first suit heads will be ideal in, you know, how to potentially, if you already have a fursuit head, how to keep yourself cool in it and things like that. So, and I, I'll try to get a, be a little slower than my first panel, which was yesterday. Um, so we will leave, you know, a little Q&A at the end for anyone who has um, further questions afterwards. All right, let's see. So, um, to start off, what makes a head so hot? Um, for one, there are, you know, it's insulated. When you put your fursuit head on, it starts just warming up your head. And whatever your temperature of your head stays in the fursuit head. Um, potentially a lack of ventilation can, you know, lead to your, when you sweat, your sweat doesn't get to evaporate and just sits and you keep getting hot. Um, your own body heat and activity level and the weather conditions, of course. If it's really hot, if it's really humid, um, it can lead to you getting even warmer in, in fursuit. Now, when it comes to ventilation, ways to contribute to ventilation is um, holes in the head. Now, um, an example would be like a 3D printed head that has little holes in the base or um, anything that doesn't get impeded by too much um, thick fabric. Like if you have like a thick um, fur over the holes, it can kind of still impede on the um, on the ventilation. Having a wide open mouth or a moving jaw that's able to open up when you speak or whenever you prop it open. Big fursuit eyes, nos um, nostril holes. So um, you can do this in both hard and soft bases. Um, we have um, not having foam in the back of the head, keeping that open helps with ventilation, and there are ear vents as well. And let's see. Now, there are different types of cooling technology. Um, there is an electric fan that you can install in the fursuit head. There are portable fans, whether it be electronic or hand fans that you can bring along with you to vent through the to fan through the ventilation. And there are cooling vests as well. Now, um, when it comes to materials, um, thicker materials for fur fabric can be more durable, but they can also trap more heat. And um, it says, as well as the high density foam um, over low density foam can create you know a harder time to have airflow. And um, for instance, with fursuits, um, fursuit furs, the fabric can have different types of knitting in it, in the backing of the fur, and the looser the knit, the more ventilation and airflow can happen. And there are also moisture-wicking materials like, like lycra and neoprene. How to stay cool in your fursuit? The main thing is to stay hydrated. Um, bring a portable fan with you or have the fan in your head um, on and keep keeping the mouth propped open whether it be a static jaw or a moving jaw that helps the airflow and to take frequent breaks it is um, just a reminder it's good to sweat um, even though you might feel a little icky when you are sweating in fursuit um, sweating is your body's natural cool down and staying hydrated is vital Whenever you sweat, you lose that moisture and you have to replenish it. 
if you don't naturally sweat as much, it would be, you know, really good to take frequent breaks and still stay hydrated because that's a risk of overheating. And just a little disclaimer um, on the difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. To keep those signs in mind, I did see signs around the con as well, just to um, you know, know the symptoms and how to react to it in time. And um, as many people say, if, especially if you're wearing a full suit, um, when, if EMT has to be you know, reached out to to take care of you, they will cut you out of the fursuit. They will, you know, even if you um, really idolize your suit, they will just do whatever that they can to help and protect you. So that being said, breaking the magic could save your life. So don't worry about if you're not all the way to the headless lounge, just pop it off if, if you're in a, a situation when you need to. And when I originally was working on this, um, this panel, I did reach out on Twitter to get some people's um, input in regards to the, um, you know, what they use to keep the head cool and things like that. So if you want, you can definitely take a look at this QR code. Hopefully it's visible if anyone wants to take a picture um, to get sent to that thread. So I'll just give a little moment um, while people do that. And the um, next part of my um, of my presentation will be the taking taking the heat part, where I did an experiment. I guess you call it experiment, where I wore two different types of heads, and um, just the comparison of how much heat um, between not wearing the suit and wearing the suit. Um, I used a heat gun in order to um, do this experiment which I have here, so, you know, at the end of the panel, if you want to do any, like, you know, ch especially those still wearing suit right now, want to just, like, zap their suit to see what it, what it, the temperature is inside the head, you're free to do so. So. Sorry if I'm speaking a little fast. Um, so, um, is everyone good on the... QR code, or does anyone still want to? Okay, let's just move forward. And if anything, you can um, come to me to get that thread as well. So for taking the heat, um, I wore suit heads in two different conditions, one indoor with low activity for about an hour um, with the room temperature of 69 degrees um, Fahrenheit. And the second one was outdoors with moderate activity in about 83 degree weather, and it was sunny. What's the difference between the low and moderate activity? Like, what's the? Um, it it will um in in the further slides it will say it, the background of it, but moderate at activity was just like walking around things that you casually do in a con. It's not like jumping around and doing backflips like that. That I would think like high activity. I did, I did not do that for the twenty minutes. Um, but disclaimer: I'm not a scientist. There was no control group. It was just me. Um, and I did the trials just with one, um, two different suits. Um, but what I did use as the main way to check the temperature, I didn't use like a thermometer. I used this heat gun. So um, you just point it at whatever you're trying to get the heat for. And then it'll say like, I just pointed it here. It was 91 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> um, it's, I think it's like roughly um, 25 US dollars. If you ever wanted to try it out yourself, just to see how how much you um, heat that you create in fursuit head, and just as a note, it was just the fursuit head for this experiment. So, the fursuit heads that I used um, a car foam base by Lion Paw Suits, and it's a Fisher Cat. Um, he looks like a bear, but you probably wouldn't know the difference here. Um, but in the other one was a a bat fursuit that I made myself out of the 3D printed base. And it just says 3D printed, the, the muzzle is a little exposed, it doesn't have fur on it, and then the, um, the rest of it is fur. All right, so a little information about the bases, um, or the fursuit heads, were that it's a car foam base with, um, with the lion paw suits, neoprene lining, and the ventilations are mostly through the 
um, open mouth and the eyes. The 3D printed head that I made myself is a 3D printed head using PLA, um, PLA um, filament. Um, there is a forehead cushion and a chin cushion, and the ventilation is through the moving jaw, the tear duct vision, and the fact that it doesn't have foam in the back of the head. So to answer your question with um, the, the, um, the control is that the indoor activity would be considered just like sitting on, um, sitting down, watching TV, playing video games. You know, very low activity. And I did that for an hour. And I know this is a lot of just a bunch of numbers here. Um, and I'll just keep on this for a little bit. But the main thing is the body temperature starting out um, comparison to where it, <coughs> sorry, where um, it ended. I, um, this is all in Fahrenheit, by the way. And I, my body temperature, just I measured on my neck, um, went up five degrees after an hour in the foam head and the suit the inside of the suit um, had increased by 16.8 degrees um, within that hour so it started at 69 ended at um, 86 and now to the 3d printed head um, the same indoor test um, my temperature increased by my um, head temperature um, increased by 4.4 degrees, and the suit temperature increased by 29.2 degrees. So that's very significant. And one thing to note is they kind of, you know, go to your head temperature pretty quickly and then kind of stay there. And as your head temperature, I noticed at least with this observation, your um, suit head continues to stay around that area. Now, the next one was the outdoor test. Um, about 20 minutes, moderate activity. I was consistently walking or playing with my dog. Um, he's not very playful. I would just chase him around. Um, but it was about 83 degrees. It was partly cloudy for both, time, um, both times wearing them. And it says feels like 85. It wasn't like too windy or anything. And same started with the foam head. Um, my, and again, it was for 20 minutes. Um, I don't know why it says indoor test. Sorry about that. Um, so this is the outdoor test. And it is, um, I increased my temperature by, my body temperature by 3.2. And the suit um, temperature increased by 27.2 degrees. Um, and that's in the foam head. And then in the 3D printed head um, outdoors for 20 minutes, it in, my body temperature increased by... 6.5 and the suit head temperature increased by about 19 degrees so at the end of this um, the takeaways from um, the um, taking the heat um, even wearing a fursuit for a short amount of time like in that 20 minutes um, for instance raises your body temperature um, it gets hot, um, it gets hot in the fursuit head and no matter the material. So my main goal was to test if, my original thought was testing if foam or um, hard base, which one would increase your temperature more. It pretty, it, in the test, at least for me personally with this test by myself, it seemed pretty marginal, the difference. So it seems as though when your head is gets to a certain temperature that's where the the head base on the inside will turn like get to at least from my observation but um, my biggest takeaway is staying hydrated during that time and knowing your limits so um, it's really nice to test if, you, if possible when you get the head test at home or in a controlled environment to just see where you're at when you're wearing your head for the first time and also, if you have the opportunity to test other people's heads before even getting a head if you don't have one yet, is definitely a good way to determine where your pacing is. And so, um, which fursuit head is right for you? Um, things to consider. Um, do you sweat? Do you overheat easily? How long do you want to suit? What activities do you want to do in suit? Do you plan to suit outside in warm weather? 
what would you wear on your body alongside this because this is mainly with um, heads do you have a handle or a friend to help you and how important are design and durability and costs when factoring that in and at that point that's the end of the um, the presentation side and um, I am definitely open to any kind of questions that you may have in regards to um, in regard to heat temperature regulation and um, I do have this heat gun for anyone who is in first with that may want to check to see how how hot they they are in first suit especially if you're still wearing it um, so yeah yeah, I, I'm sorry, I do go a little fast. Um, still getting used to the whole panel thing. <laughs> yes? I'd say to you or really anyone in the room, if you have any hacks to stay cool, like a cooling towel, or there's other things that you can, like as seen on TV, keep cool things, do you think those things help? So I believe anything that um, can increase airflow, like if you already have a head, for instance, and you're not trying to get a new head or get one built um, with certain specifications, just fans. Um, there are easy cool down vests, so you can wear a vest that has like ice packs, and that can also cool you down as well. Um, definitely um, just having you know, airflow going in or out of the head just to keep yourself cool is another, is definitely a good method. Um, I, I do think if you have like a mouth that doesn't stay open, um, getting something to wedge it in like a toy or a st um, stuffed animal or even just foam to like open the mouth to keep it open can definitely help with airflow. And if possible, having um, you know, no, nothing obstructing the eyes if they have, if they don't have domes around it, for instance. Um, any other questions? Yes. For fans in, um, in the head, how have you, I know we tried to include one of the little USB fans and attach it to in, the inside of his, and it was just like a little, little tiny square guy. Um, what have you found to be successful in using fans and integrating them into the headpiece? So um, just to let everyone hear, the question is in regards to installing a fan, what's the best way to integrate them into the head that's already um, one without it? Um, one thing that's really important with the um, fan, if possible, to have it either, it, whether you blow it into your head or the cool the heat out of your head, it has to kind of go somewhere. So um, with the head, does the, um, with yours, does the nose have, is it closed or does it have? Two little uh, nostril holes and the mouth does open, but it is spring loaded, so it right. keeps itself shut. So I would recommend if you, um, since you have, or for anyone who has um, nostril holes, just point it, you know, angle it towards the nostril holes. It's, you can always switch it around to see if it's better to take the cool, the hot air out or bring cool air in um, to just kind of experiment which makes you cooler. Um, any other questions? Yes. Question. The 3D fruit suit head that you made, do you have any pictures on what it looks like without the fur? What it looks like without the fur. Let me see. What does the design look like? And then, given you can design the entire shape of the object and add a new people as well, has there been any attempts to add actual ventilation into the head itself, like little holes for, for that matter? Um, I can see if I have, um, maybe towards the, um, towards the end I can look to see if I have any um, beforehand pictures. Um, but when it comes to the holes in the heads, I do know that um, depending on the maker, I personally don't um, add holes into the head um, because I don't, because depending on the knitting, even with the holes in the head, I don't feel like a lot of um, ventilation going through the like airflow going through the fur by itself. But there are plenty of makers that do. Um, it, sometimes it saves on filament. That's one of the, um, the benefits. The other benefit is the um, potential for airflow. 
but it does depend on the material that goes over top of it um, when it comes to that airflow. Uh, yeah. um, any other questions? Yes. Are you uh, planning to continue your research or? I, I would um, like to do more of that research. Obviously it would be contingent on if anyone else would be open to it, maybe down the line. Um, just because, you know, doing it with just me, myself personally, that's not a, enough of a control group. But, um, yeah, if anyone would like to contribute to the little science experiment I'm doing, you can definitely reach out to me on socials. Um, but um, at this time, unless there's other people that are open to that, I wouldn't be able to move forward with that further. Um, yes? Hmm? Yeah, you can definitely borrow the heat and um, what you do is just point it like that at whatever you're doing. And then when you let it go, that's the temperature. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Any, yes? Because we're like coming in like when everybody else has it. Could we see what the styles are? Oh, go, oh, you want to go back in the PowerPoint? Sure. Yeah, definitely. Let me just see if I'm good at doing that. Okay. So the style of the two heads that were, okay. Okay, so I'll leave that on that slide. Um, the style of the two first two heads that I experimented with. Yeah. And um, do we have any other questions? Yes. Yeah, just I'm thinking about getting like a first two head eventually. Um, and uh, what would you say is like the best ventilated fabric, like the specific type of fabric, or is it just like kind of um, just to make sure, are you asking the vent the fabric to put over the head or underneath? Like underneath or even over, just like the best type of fabric that offers the best quality of ventilation. So when it comes to the, thank you, um, when it comes to the ventilation on the inside, I would recommend um, if you are using a foam head um, to use neoprene or lycra for the inside. Um, you can use, I have seen people use like cotton, but that is not moisture wicking, so it won't take the, um, the sweat away from your face and let it evaporate quicker. And it can be a little harder for it to dry. Um, but that is also like loose knit, so that's a possibility, but most um, will recommend, and I will recommend as well, um, neoprene or lycra. Um, neoprene is a little more insulating, but it does moisture wick. Um, and when it comes to the outside, um, you know, fur um, would be, because it has that knit quality to it, so it has like that stretch, so you can, it has a little more airflow than let's say um, fleece, for instance. And fleece is known to be insulating, so that would contribute to a hotter fursuit. Okay. Yeah. And um, any other questions? on time. I know I, I went pretty quickly. So um, um, I do appreciate everyone who came out. And if you have any, you know, questions for me personally, like that you don't want to say in a big group, I am going to, I'll just stick around here until the um, end of the panel. But I do um, appreciate everyone who came out in regards to this. And um, again, my um, my socials are here, so if you ever want to reach out to me, I am I'm more than happy to ask any um, additional questions in regards to that, or in regards to first to make or anything. Um, so yeah, I do. Thank you for coming out to my panel. I do really appreciate it. This is my second ever panel, so I, I do appreciate that. Thank you. One more question. So, uh, the age of my suit, which is actually a full body, I've just gotten smarter and turned into a person, um, didn't have any of the moisture wicking materials inside. And it's all the, the long hair, which I like the look of. But would you feel that it would still be better to go with like a short fur design over a long fur design as far as breathability? So, um, when it comes to breathability, um, it's more the, the backing in, in the back of it. And the fur that, that's a resin head, correct? 
Yes, so the any fur that gets in contact without any like holes or hair, hair flow on the face, it really doesn't matter if it's... Oh, in the body. Um, I would say... Um, because the, it depends on the density of the fur. So you can have short fur that is more dense than long fur, like the, the gaps between the fur. So it, it really depends on how the backing feels. And I personally don't recommend lining a fursuit body where you're not, um, as far as body suits go, where you're not like holding like, like padding or anything because that impedes on your, um, the airflow. So lined suits, while they look nice on the inside, they do um, take away from the airflow in the bodysuit. Um, that's kind of why you should wear Under Armour to protect it, rather than lining the suit. Yeah, that's usually lined suits. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely.